Shabbat Shalom, little Hebrews. Peace on the Sabbath day. Welcome to Yah's Set Apart Children's Place. And welcome to another lesson series, The Origin of New Year's, brought to you by Emma Mayimia and big sister Isilia. How did the celebration of New Year's Eve even begin? And why is the beginning of a year placed in the middle of a dead winter? And where did the many customs surrounding it start? Well, first, little Bruce, I really hope you were paying attention to the origin of Christmas lesson last week because New Year's is the same tradition. It's one of the oldest and most widespread of all pagan traditions. The custom of celebrating it remains unchanged for 4,000 years. Meaning, little Bruce, that the traditions and practices didn't change. In fact, most people are not sure why they celebrate New Year's Eve or New Year's Day. They say it's to be thankful for making it another year. Today it has become very dangerous to walk the streets late at night when the New Year is about to ring in. People fight. You have stealing and killing during this holiday. But we're all justified or declared right in the idea that we're doing something good. So, now that we have recapped the traditional meaning of New Year's, let's find out what's really going on here. Last week, we learned that Christmas is the celebration of the winter solstice, or sun stoppage. So, for a brief review, in the Northern Hemisphere, Winter solstice is the day of the year near December 22nd, when the sun is farthest from the earth. It is the shortest day and the longest night of the year. The sun appears at its lowest point in the sky, and its elevation appears to be the same for several days before and after the solstice. Following the winter solstice, the days begin to grow longer and the nights shorter. Remember that the heathen, or Gentiles, became dismayed or discouraged at the signs of the heaven, sun, and in turn, these sun worshippers created an entire festival based on this occurrence, which we see in Jeremiah chapter 10. Later, pagans attached this to their sun god, Jesus Zeus Bacchus, to reflect his birth, death, and resurrection, twisting the scriptures pertaining to the actual Messiah, Yehoshua, as their source of reference. But it doesn't stop there, little bros. So let's take a look at New Year, shall we? Did you know that New Year's used to be celebrated on March 1st? That's because the month of January didn't exist. The old calendar just had 10 months from March to December. It was in 46 BCE when the Roman Emperor Julius Caesar first established January 1st as New Year's Day. Janus was the Roman god of doors and gates and had two faces, one looking forward and one looking back. Caesar felt that the month named after this god, January, would be the appropriate door to the year. This became known as the Julian calendar, but in order to synchronize or match little brews, the calendar with the sun, Caesar had to let the previous year drag on for 445 days. Remember, these people were sun worshippers or pagans. Deuteronomy chapter 12 verse 29 through 30 tells us, when Yah your power does cut you off from before you, the nations which you go to dispossess, and you dispossess them and dwell in their land. Gird yourself that you do not that you are not ensnared to follow them after they are destroyed from before you, and that you do not inquire about their mighty ones, saying, How did these nations serve their mighty ones? And let me do so too. Clearly, Yah is against the worship of mighty ones, right? That which is the celebration of Satan's holy days. But let's dig a little deeper. 
Let's look at the festivities. Today, New Year's Eve has become a time for people to wallow in excesses of liquor. More alcoholic beverages are consumed during the holiday season than any other time of the year. Isn't it interesting, little bros, that holiday actually means vacation, festival, feast, or day off? So holiday itself is shown in the people's actions. So while they're getting drunk, this is probably because of the worship of Bacchus, the god of drunken wine. New Year's Eve is also noted for its wicked, wild, and nasty partying. The Romans called it Saturnalia, an iron of the god Saturn. And that is a yes, the same Saturnalia that is Christ's mess. Among them, it was extremely popular, um, a time of revelings, drinking, parties, and feasts, finally ending in human sacrifice. The modern attitude, too, seems to be, have a wild time on New Year's Eve and turn over a new leaf on New Year's Day. But Yah speaks against wild parties. Galatians chapter 5 verse 21 tells us, Envy, murders, drunkenness, wild parties, and the like, of which I forewarn you, even as I also said before, that those who practice such as these shall not inherit the kingdom of Yah. 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 3 tells us, for we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the desires of the Gentiles, having walked in indecencies, lusts, drunkenness, orgies, wild parties, and abominable idolatries. Romans chapter 13 verse 13 tells us, Let us walk becomingly as in the day, not in wild parties and drunkenness, not in living together and indecencies, not in fighting and envy. The New Year festivities, like that of Christmas, mirror another very popular holiday in Satan's world, Carnival, or Farewell to the Flesh, which also includes a cake dedicated, dedicated to the gods. Except they call it a king cake, which celebrates another pagan day, Epiphany, January 6th, and linked with the visit of the Magi, the alleged three wise men. Remember, little bruise, scripture gives no number. But this, too, was originally an Egyptian date for the winter solstice. There it is again! The worship of the sun. But back to this cake. The person who pulls a gift from the midst of the cake has some kind of good luck. Sounds like a whole bunch of witchcraft to me. Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 through 21 tells us, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, indecencies, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyance, murders, drunkenness, ravelings, and such of the like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in the past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of Yah. And Yah also forbids the baking of cakes to gods. Jeremiah chapter 7 verse 18 tells us, The children are gathering wood, the fathers are lighting the fire, and the women are kneading their dough to make cakes for the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings to gods to provoke me. This is a clear breaking of the law. Exodus chapter 20 verses 1 through 3 says, And Yah spoke all these words, saying, I am Yah, your power, who brought you out the land of Egypt, 
out of the house of slavery. You have no mighty ones, gods, against my face. Anyway, Mardi Gras, Carnival, is a time of wild merrymaking in which participants passionately indulge every fleshly desire. We just read about how that was wrong, didn't we, little bros? Just like New Year's. Although the term Mardi Gras refers to a specific day, it is not a single day celebration. And neither was New Year's a single day celebration, but lasted for 11 days, each day with its own celebration. As for Mardi Gras, it began every year when? In January. And likewise, the festivities occur daily, ending in the final Mardi Gras celebration the day before the observance of Lent, a 40-day period of self-denial. Mardi Gras is also considered to be the last day for indulging in the pleasures of the flesh. This too mirrors New Year's Eve. Have a wild time on New Year's Eve and turn over a new leaf on New Year's Day. But what does y'all say about walking in the flesh? Romans chapter 7 verse 5 says, For when we were in the flesh, the passions of sins through the law were working in our members to bear fruit to death. Do you know what that means, little bros? It means that before we knew Yah and law, we were sinning. When you sin, you walk in the flesh. And when you walk in the flesh, sin, your works, actions, lead you to the lake of fire, which is death. Whereas when we walk in the spirit, righteousness, our works, actions, bear fruit to life, the kingdom. Romans chapter 8 verse 5 says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the matters of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit, the matters of the spirit. So we don't care about pleasing these fleshly bodies, just our spiritual bodies. What's up with this New Year's baby? Theodore Gaster writes concerning the familiar New Year's baby. He says, actually, the New Year baby is far older than he looks. In ancient Greece, it was customary at the great festival of Dionysus to parade a baby cradled in a winnowing basket. This was taken to symbolize the annual rebirth of that God as the spirit of fertility, i.e. New Year's. This is also where we come back to the king cake, celebrating the magi or alleged three wise men presenting gifts to baby Jesus. This baby is the baby Jesus, and it is the prize found inside the king cake that promises good luck. 